Hey, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're having a great day. I'm Oren, and today we're going to be talking about the most exciting part of any smartphone, the thing that persuaded me to get this iPhone, the camera. So, is it still capable of capturing crisp and detailed images three years later? Let's find out. I've owned this phone since it was new, and I've got a pretty good idea of how the camera performs, because I've used it every day. Moving straight on with the review, I'm going to be using the default camera app that every iPhone comes with. There are great third party options out there, but that's a topic for another video. So if you've just come here to see what pictures look like from the device, here's a picture from each camera. But if you've come here for a more detailed review about video, pictures, and the best settings to use if you're on a Windows computer or a Mac, keep watching. The phone offers three cameras, a front facing camera and two rear facing cameras. The front facing camera features a nice 7 megapixel camera tucked away into the notch which is great for taking selfies and posting on social media. But in all seriousness, it's more than capable of what it's used for in its day-to-day -day scenarios, and the only thing that lets it down is low-light photography. This is a photo taken in light conditions, and this is a photo taken in dark conditions. The front-facing camera offers portrait mode. I can count on one hand how many times I've used it in the past six months. It's just very gimmicky on this device. It's a good idea, but it's not implemented good enough to get good shots. And the other portrait options just aren't worth mentioning. Here are some examples. Moving on to the front facing camera video, it records at 1080p 30fps and feels a little bit zoomed in but is fine. Image stabilisation is good and contrast is also quite good, as you can see I'm in focus, the sky looks detailed, the horse looks pretty good. Recording in low light situations is pretty noisy on this device but a £6 Amazon light ring will fix that. This is audio and video recorded on the front facing camera. The rear of the phone features two 12 megapixel sensors. People always called them traffic light sensors when it was first released and made fun out of them, but they're surprisingly good cameras. I use them all the time, it's very rarely I don't take a picture in the day, even if it is just of a dog or flowers or something I find interesting. If you're into photography, you should enable the rule of thirds grid. It'll help you better compose your images, and you do this just by going into settings and then camera and then enabling grid. I have it turned on because it can help you take slightly more professional photos and is just a really nice feature to have. Since we're in settings, you should turn on Smart HDR and keep normal photo. What this does is it merges a bunch of photos to get the best looking image. These are the before and afters. You can't always tell a difference, but in some scenarios you really can. The reason I have it turned to keep the normal photo on it as well is just because there's a small chance, a very small chance, that there'll be an artifact from the merging process. There was quite a few of these posted on Twitter when the phone first came out. The regular camera on the iPhone XS, in my opinion, is pretty good. Its colours are decent and it's got decent background blur and the detail in the images is pretty good. And it also featured portrait mode like I discussed before, but let's just not mention that again. I've noticed that the times 2 zoom is pretty soft compared to the regular one times zoom but this is still my go-to for taking pictures when they're a bit further away. If you're taking photos from far away, you can go up to 10 times zoom, but I wouldn't recommend doing this because images become blurry and it's just, in my opinion, really not worth it. You'll get a bad image. Just use the times 2 zoom. Because the 10 times zoom is digital, meaning that the quality will quickly degrade. Here are some examples. As you can see, the times 1 zoom is fine and the times 2 zoom is fine, but in some scenarios it's slightly softer. And then the times 10 zoom is just not worth using. Moving on to video for the rear cameras 4K 30fps on the rear camera, 4K 30fps on the second rear camera. Now going back to the settings app and navigating to camera. Apple offers something called high efficiency mode. This gives you a wider range of options to choose from when recording and taking photos. These record in a format called HEIC. This stands for high efficiency image format, which is fine if you're editing on a Mac, but I use a PC, so I would have to use a file format converter and it would lower the image quality and it just wouldn't be worth it in the long run. So to be clear, I recommend using H EIC if you're using a Mac and transferring files to that, but if you're using a Windows PC like me, I'd recommend turning this setting off because it will just cause a lot of hassle later down the line. Image colour seems pretty lifelike and it's pretty surprising. Again, contrast and video stabilisation is good, just like the front camera. The phone offers an auto low light in settings. This will allow the phone to automatically reduce the frame rate of the video to better the image quality in low light. I leave this turned on, it's completely up to you what you do. The phone offers 1080p at 120 FPS, 720 at 240 FPS, but this isn't worth using simply because 720p isn't good anymore in 2021. If you put that on a big screen, you'll notice that it's not that good looking. If you crop it in in a video editor, it'll also be pretty bad looking as well. It also offers 1080p 240fps at high efficiency, but again I can't use that because I don't use a Mac to edit my videos, but I use 
1080p at 120 fps, which is fine. When it comes to storage, you'll know what you're using the phone for. If you're using it for 4K video all the time, you probably need the 256 gigabytes version. I've used 69 gigabytes of the storage on this device, and 64 gigabytes just wouldn't have been enough. Maybe if you use Apple's iCloud storage plan, it would be, but that's just up for you to decide as well. But to be safe, I would recommend getting the 256 gigabyte at least. So if you already own or have bought this phone, it's a great phone for photographers and videographers or YouTubers, and a lot of people have started with a lot less. I got 100,000 subscribers with an iPhone, and this is an iPhone 5 that recorded in 30 FPS, terrible quality. It's a great tool and there's no better camera than the one you've got on you at all times. So if you've enjoyed this video, check out the channel for more tech reviews and like and subscribe. Thank you for watching and enjoy the rest of your day.